Hey guys, insight number three. Sorry, the last one went a bit long, but it's really good stuff. It's a good movie. Now this, actually though, this one I think would make the best movie because, ah, the women are the heroes and I love that when that happens. So, this is the story of Deborah and she was a judge. Uh, one of the judges that was raised up, but it also tells us a story of a woman called Yael, who's not a judge, but just a righteous woman guided by the spirit. Um, and she's pretty, mm, pretty cool. Um, so anyway, let's have a look at theirs. So what the question is, for, for before we look at their stories, the whole question I've got for you on this one is, what words or actions of these women show their faith in Christ? Because that's really what it is, isn't it? When we go out there, it's not necessarily always what we speak, it's how we are. So what words and actions show the faith in Christ that these women had, and what can we learn from that in our own faith and actions and adopt into our own faith and actions? Um, so if we look at these, in verse 4 it says, Deborah was a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. So she was the judge at that time. Now she would sit under a palm tree. They would come up to her. Everyone would come up to her and ask for her wisdom and her guidance. Very cool that it was a woman. Um, Lapidoth means like a uh, torch like spirit or like a flame or yeah. So that's got that meaning. Whether she was even married to someone like that and then widowed or... Um, that's more like the place where she dwelt. It's very ambiguous and there's a lot of different opinions. However, go with Deborah. She was a prophetess. Just stick with that because that's golden. Um, that's an absolute, from the scriptures, done absolute truth. But the, the rest of why she was there or how a female got to be the judge, it, it, yeah, because it's not traditional, but again, remember, Christ ain't traditional, he is out of the box, and it works every time, so keep that in mind too, but when you're reading about Deborah, she's really, really awesome, so basically, they're under attack, um, and she calls out Barak, Barak is the head of the army, and says, like, we need to go to war to protect ourselves, and he's like, I'm not going unless you come with me. Because obviously he trusted her and knew that her guidance would save them. Um, so she's like, well, of course I'm coming with you. I'm not going to send you into army without the prophet, you know, the prophetess. I'm not going to send you into battle without guidance. Yes, I'll come with you. So she goes up into battle, which is pretty brave for a woman of that day, don't you think? Um, and so... They get where they're going to go because this is Sisera that gathered the forces against them. So Sisera is gathered there to fight them. Um, what's really cool is in verse 14, And Deborah said unto Barak, um, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera, Sorry, I'm off camera. Um, Sisera, into thine hand, and the Lord um, is, is not the Lord gone out before thee. Um, so... She's saying before it even happens, the Lord's delivered these guys into your hand. Just go get them. Um, and then in, in the next verse, it says there that the Lord discomforted the um, Sisera and all his chariots. So what that means is that he made the ground like too mushy. Not necessarily wet, but just because they had heavy chariots. So it's not going to work, is it? So they all got stuck. Um, they got attacked. They didn't have their... Um, advantage of being in a chariot and Sisera t makes a run for it and the army overcomes them. Now Deborah had already previously prophesied that the end of Sisera would be by a woman. Now Sisera runs off and finds Yael. He's trying to find, you know, he's battle weary, he's trying to find safety. Obviously he knows her because her husband is known to him previously. They've done dealings and business and whatever. I'm not quite sure how that relationship is. It's, again, a bit ambiguous and a bit vague. But feels safe with her. Stupid mistake, really. But anyway, so he feels safe with her. She comforts him, says, yes, of course, come in. And he's like, I'm thirsty. She's like, give you a glass of milk and I'll tuck you into a blanket, have a rest. She knows he's evil. And you've got to know that she was led by the Lord for what she does next. Now, it's important to know before you know what she does, that the women in that time were responsible for taking down the tents, moving them, putting the tents up. So very strong woman, very beefy, strong, muscular, had the power to do it woman. 
although I'm also assuming quite feminine and pretty and beautiful because that's how I like to think she is because she's kind of cool um but she might not have been but you know that's what I want to think I want to think that she's just this beautiful spirit no matter what she looks like but strong is a good point to know so let's read in 21 and 22 because that's really good um but she says he says to her can you stand at the door of the tent and just make sure that I'm kept safe and she's like of course I can and she's you know like giving him all the assurances in the world um so uh 21 says and then Yael Heber's, Heber's wife took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly under him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground for he was fast asleep and weary so he died right she drove a nail through his head through one end to the other end so much that it stuck into the ground okay yep tent pegs would have been pretty big then and that would have happened but how and he didn't know he so he died he died as deborah had prophesied um and then as Barak pursued Sisera, Yael came out to meet him, told him what happened, and said, and then, look, Sisera is dead, and there there was the nail in his temples. Um, so, two brave and smart women. Um, Deborah was a bright flame of wisdom. She really was. She willingly goes to battle for her people and prophesies of Sisera's downfall and death at the hands of a woman. Enter Yael, who calmly and meekly comforts Sisera before driving a tent peg through his skull go go Yael Ugh, my kind of girl um she knew he was evil and was led by God to kill him in his weak moment and like talk about being led into like a lion's den right um so how do the actions and all words of these women show their faith in Christ because they believed they believed it and they had no doubt whether Yael already had a plan and knew what to do, or whether she just improvised with what she had, which sounds like what she did, is just, like, took the opportunity to, like, okay, this guy's wicked, I want to get rid of him, he's caused problems before, uh, I know my husband's dealt with him, but I don't like him, I'm getting rid of him, I'm taking this opportunity to put an end to this, because he's being really evil, he was a very sinful man. Enter, what have I got? Oh, I have a hammer and a tent peg. That'll do. Mm. So, yeah. Um, Deborah, on the other hand, just went into battle, prophesied everything. And, I mean, it says that everyone came to her and while well, she sat under the palm tree and asked her advice. Don't you want someone like that in your life? You can just go and visit and just say, like, hey, I've got this issue. What should I do? I mean, we all need a Deborah. We all need a Sisera. We all, we all need a Deborah. We all need a Yael. We need a, a warrior and we need someone with wisdom. And these two women, amazing. We don't even know if they even met. We don't know that. Um, I'm kind of hoping they did. I'm kind of hoping they caught up. I'm kind of hoping that, um, yeah, that Brack took Yael back and said, Deborah, this is the woman that did it. But we don't know. But kind of cool, right? Um, good movie. Good movie script. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sister Julie B. Beck, though, she said, Righteous women have changed the course of history and will continue to do so. And we know that. We know there's so many righteous women out there who have changed the course of history. Whether it's like Mother Teresa in her gentle, kind way, or whether it's people like Joan of Arc who went out with a sword. You know, there's, there's just righteous women who changed the course of history. So be one of those. And your sphere of influence... Whether you're a woman or a man, just change the course of history in your sphere of influence and be that righteous person. Mm, that's what we can learn. All right, another long one. Sorry, guys, but good stuff, right? Okay, we're going to go over a look at Gideon's story in chapter 6 to 8. I'll see you there.